I want to talk a little bit about, unfortunately, uh, an injury that you revealed to us uh, late on uh, Tuesday night where you, you've lost the services of Donovan Daniels. Yeah, look, um, Donovan had a scan about three weeks ago and we had the results back saying it was moderate, if you like, a, a, a medium-term thing, four weeks, six weeks. Fine, you know, then he, he, we wait three weeks, we, he starts stepping up his rehab and Owen's saying things aren't right. So we sent him for another scan and a different radiologist, you know, the normal consultant radiologist who was on holiday the first scan, it was a different, somebody reported on a different, a different person reported on the scan. Then uh, Andy Dunn got hold of the scan and went, hang on a minute, this isn't, this isn't your, your normal stuff, this is, you know, you need to go and out see a, a, a hamstring consultant here and it might be a surgical intervention and that was on the Thursday and uh, Friday he went to London uh, fr sorry Friday he had the scan Monday he went to London Tuesday he had the operation so we've turned it around pretty quick to try and make some time up but even still it's um, he's going to be out for three to four months and we you know we hope he'll uh, He'll come back stronger than ever. Can you give us an update on Chris Porter as well before let's clear all the injuries up? Where where are you with him? He's currently outside running, so he's not far off. That's good news, of course. Uh, it's been an excellent uh, few, few days for you as well with, with your team. If you had to just pick one area, what would have pleased you the most? Returning to goals, clean sheets, performance and results. What, what What's really pleased you and your staff? Um... There's no, no real one um, one point. I never thought we were far away when we were losing 1-0. You know, there's, there's some fine margins. We had to tweak one or two things. There was a bit more... Um, we had to be a bit more insistent with them about how important goals were um, and, and scoring goals. And they've, they've showed that. They, you know, I think the, the pleasing thing is they stick at it. No, some teams lose three on the spin, and it's it's not the whole world caved in. But you know, sometimes sometimes they are damaging. I've never felt that here with this group, never, because I think that they've got enough ability to to recover at any point against whoever. So I think that you know the 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 commitment and, and desire to sort of get results is. You know, is I think is a a real good quality to have, and I think that's our lads have got that. They're not phased whether it's you know top of the league, losing playoff finalists, you know, a big historic club that's coming tomorrow. They're just not phased. So, you know, hopefully uh, we'll get another three points to round off an excellent week. Is that is that how you how you view like tomorrow's game at, at Fratton Park, massive club with as you say a big history history behind them, but you won there last time as well, having come as, you know as you pointed out off a of a back of a of a bad result, but two wins, two clean sheets, and if you can make it three, it's what you've been saying, is it that you're going in that right direction? It'll give you another pointer towards you moving in the right direction. Yeah, I, I think we're already moving in the right direction. I think if you have a look at our first game of the season, the first league game, Charlton, or even even Lincoln, how open we were, how expansive we were, and we had we had enough quality and, and control in the game, but it was still a bit hairy. Whereas where we are now is we, we aren't as open, but we've got more control in the game. You know, so that, that there's there's a rhythm. You know, the other night, even even though it wasn't fluid at all times, there was a rhythm. There was a doggedness, mm. and that puts you in a rhythm, believe it or not. It's it's so there's there's lots of pointers that sort of say we're already on us on the right track. And as I, I showed the boys yesterday, the first ten games of the season, there's only Oxford who's had a tougher first ten games if you rank where the opposition are in the league that you're playing. And it's interesting because Peterborough have had the easiest first 10 games because they're 24th on that table. You know, and you look at the top, mm. Wigan, I think, were third, managers left. I think Bristol Rovers were fourth. 
manager sacked. Um, Swindon fifth, managers left. And we're going, we've got the second, and I don't think I'm under any pressure. I don't know, but um, we're going along great. <laughs> Had a real tough start. So, you know, and all the guys are going, oh, right, yeah, that's interesting. You know, you go, that's, you, you've played the teams. I think we've played all the top seven, is it? Something like that. After Saturday. <laughs> so you go, well, that's, straight away, you go, well, for us to be where we are is first time in the league for a while is, is okay. But there's a lot more to come. There's a lot more to come. And we've got to make sure that we just keep going. Everybody knows about Portsmouth's history and how passionate their supporters are. Their home record just isn't mirroring, which has been a terrific away record. They're unbeaten away from home, but lost three at home. Do you think they could just be one of those clubs that are, you know, missing out on those 15,000 fans that they usually get? Um, quite possibly. You know, the, the stats could tell you that. But then, you don't know. Sometimes it helps them. Sometimes it helps them. You know, if they haven't taken the lead in the first half and they've got a, you know, it might help but it might help us if there's 15,000 fans in tomorrow. Why? Because they have got a better away record and if they haven't scored a goal by half time maybe their fans will get on the back. So it might help them tomorrow. You can look at it both ways. It's not, um, mm. that, that's not black and white I have to say. It's, if you want to make it a point you can. If you want to dismiss it as a point, you, you can also do that as well. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on that. You, you've mentioned about how uh, harder you've become to beat since the opening couple of games of the season. Just nine goals, I think, conceded in the league. You're right up there with the best. And also, in terms of a crew, I, I know we check the stats out, and you, you've. You sometimes smile at them, what we come out with. But 0-2, I think it was the last time that crew in this sort of start to the season had that type of defensive record, a great chance to, to equal that record and, and prove what you are doing, becoming a very hard team to beat and also being a, a good team to watch. Yeah, I think, listen, if you, if you don't concede goals and you score goals, you're going to have a good season. It's as simple as that. We're doing okay at the minute at both ends of the pitch. Not blistering at either end, um, but okay. Um, you know, obviously keeping clean sheets gives you a platform to score goals. Um, but when you do score goals, you, you tend to win games. So we've got to keep going. We've keep, got to keep that resilience, and we've got to keep scoring goals. It's you know, it's. It's, I suppose it's easy when you say it like that. It's, it's harder to do in practice, but um, <laughs> with, we're going along okay, but we've got more to come. We've got to have more to come. And you mentioned about the Portsmouth supporters and how passionate they are. Every football club in the game has got its passionate supporters. And just finally, just a, a thought, Dave, and fingers crossed, we got are seemingly getting closer and closer to bringing those supporters back. And it would be probably the best Christmas present for everybody if we can get fans into the Alexander Stadium before Christmas. Yeah, I've, I've, I've read those reports. I've also read that if we have a Christmas, then we're going to have 25 days of burying all his grandparents. So, com conflicting, maybe. Um, we all hope it happens. We all hope that a vaccine, although it's not a magic bullet, would, would help. Um, so that we can get to back to normality as, as soon as possible, if you like. So it seems as though the government are trying to do their best and help um, because, you know, the, the, the fans are important, important in terms of support, in, in, important in terms of financial support. Although what I would say is if they were bringing a thousand fans back in, it actually, it costs more to open the stadium and, and steward it all. So there's got to be a uh, a common sense approach. It's just another factor. That's not for me to decide. I'm just, you know, I hope they come back. I hope they come back ASAP.